Hi friends, welcome back to Creative Unique Treasures. My name is Trisha and my husband's name is Jeff on our channel. Jeff. And I love to recreate what someone may think is ready for the trash into a unique treasure. If this is something that you are interested in, Jeff. And I would appreciate you subscribing, sharing, and leaving a comment. That way you will be notified whenever we upload a new video. We so appreciate you taking your time and sharing it with us. Blessings and thank you for watching. Good morning everyone, or good evening, whatever time time it is at, in your area. Um, this is Trisha, Creative Unique Treasures. Um, thank you for joining me on my channel. Um, I got this, uh, I'm going to do some just a little bit of different uh, uh, projects that I'm going to be putting in my booth. And I have this Rust-Oleum, the milk paint. This is the first time I'm using it. So it's a classic white and it's the first time I'm using it so I don't know quite I've saw online different reviews some people like it some people don't but I like to try it out so this is the Rust-Oleum milk paint finish for decor and furniture classic white color and I'm gonna go ahead and open it up I've used Sweet Pickens milk paint um, I've used that was that's the only one I've used but it's kind of like a nice consistency you don't have to um, pre-mix it with um, water so a lot of people believe that it's not a true milk paint if you don't have to mix it if it doesn't come in powdered form but I like to try different things and see how it goes so I'm going to stir it up here and it, it's a nice consistency and I have a few different projects that I'm going to try it on I don't have a well I did have my brush oh there it is it's underneath there um, I don't have a great brush I have the Worcester I think that's how you say it the Worcester um, paint brush I don't have a I was debating on using it's got a nice consistency. Um, I was debating on using a chip, just a cheap chip brush, but this one's like the next step. It's this one's like five ninety seven or so at um, Home Depot, and it's just the Wooster Wooster. Um, I have this tray that I'm going to be making for my mother's ninety first birthday. She likes me to make a tray once in a while for her and I'm going to put a saying a prayer that she always prays and um, I'm going to put that on on the front but I'm going to go ahead and use do the milk paint on the back just to see how it it covers and it I kind of like it I kind of like it I, I wonder how the finish will be I kind of like the way it's um, going on so I have this tray and I have a few other th items. This is going to be like a hot podge kind of video just of different odds and ends that I'm going to... Yeah, I kind of like it. It's nice. It's a uh, nice, nice consistency, good coverage. I don't know if it's going to chip. I think i seen on the video that you can... You can always, there's different techniques to get it to chip or to have a chippy look. Um, you can take frogger tape and painter's tape and put it on there and rip it off. And you can also use a heat gun and see if, see if something will chip off. But I think I'm gonna, just going to try it like this to see how flat it lays, how it levels out and how, how the coverage is. Yeah, I, I think I like it. I like Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I don't know if anybody's tried it. If you haven't, you should. 
it's very nice and it's it's affordable. I have a lot of different chalk paints in my stash. I have Wise Owl, I have Fusion, I have DIY Dubby's Design Diary clay based paint. I have even Fairy Chalk Mother that she that was a paint that was out when I first started in 2017. But she's not in business anymore. And I like her stuff too. Some of it has built-in sealers, some of it doesn't. This milk paint I don't believe has a built-in seal sealer, so I'd have to probably put a sealer or an oil wax or something on top of it. But it's it's drying very nice. I like it. I like it when it dries and it levels out. And I got something right there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I was gonna just do the bottom of this, but I think I'll do the whole thing. Get a good good get a good coat on there. So we're try, trying out the Rust-Oleum milk paint. That's what we're trying. I don't want no drips. If I would have known it was this nice, I would have used a better, one of my nicer brushes, but I tend to not want to try new paint on, with my new brushes. I didn't know like the sweet pickens when you use when you do paint with the sweet pickens it's um it's really kinda is hard on their brushes so it's best to try to use maybe a chip brush with that kind of paint. Because it's harder to clean it clean all the paint out. I guess I'll find out how good how easy it is to clean this brush out. And that's my phone. That's probably my mother. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought it was my mother, but it was Jeff, my husband Jeff. He's gone to get an oil change. And it's early 9 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. We have to work at the farmhouse where we have our booth, our little business at the farmhouse in Holly, Michigan. And he's getting an oil change and he needed to let me know that it, he had about four people ahead of him. So he was wondering if he was going to have enough time before we had to go to work at the farmhouse. but. He should be okay on that. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah, this is doing pretty darn good. I'm, I'm really impressed. I really like it. I very much like it. I can't wait to see how it dries and if it is easy to maybe possibly smooth out and be chippy. If you have a Menards by you, I got this. I got the Rust-Oleum paint at Menards. I also you also can get it at Ace True Value. Ace I think it's called Ace True Value, or maybe it's just Ace Hardware. And a lot of times I have a coupon. Or you at Menards you get eleven percent off. I'm always good. I always love the sales. Okay, it's my first coat. Oops, I gotta get this side. It dries really fast too, though, which is nice. 
Yeah, I really like this. Yay. Try to get the drips out. Okay, I'll set that off to dry. In some in some places, I don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of translucent, I think, is with the word for it. Like you can see the grain through it in some areas. The next thing I have is Jeff cut out these fabulous bunnies for Easter. They're quite large. It's probably about 24 inches tall from the top of his ear to the bottom of the base. Um, I, I did a pattern and I um, and I, then he, then he, I put, traced it over on the wood like, like, like we do. And then, um, he put a little thing to, so it can stand. So it's pretty cute. They stand up pretty good. Um, so he cut that out on a scroll saw or his band saw. I don't know which one. And then he, he sanded the edges so, um, so that you wouldn't get no splinters. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to decoupage this, but I'm going to go ahead and put a coat of paint on it on both sides. And here's my decoupage paper. It's scrapbook paper. And this is the pattern I'm going to do on this one. And um, I have this one and I have another bunny. This one's about, this one's about 15 inches tall. He's a cute one. He's... He sits down like this, and then I'm trying to get it in the camera. And then he's got some a floppy ear. So they're real cute. I'm going to put these in my booth. <clears throat> and I'm going to do this one with this decoupage color paper. It's kind of like a pink and peach and blue. <clears throat> this one here is going to be like a teal and pink and peach. So yeah, I'm gonna, so I'm going to have to put... I think I'm going to put a coat of paint on the back of these. I don't know if I'm going to really necessarily waste my paint on the front. I'll think about it. But I'm going to go ahead and put the smoke paint on the back. Because I think I'm defeating the purpose. Now if this was uh, deca like the decoupage um, rice paper... Um, that's more like a translucent, you know, like a see-through. So if you have a bright color underneath, it helps it out. But this scrapbook paper is pretty thick. Actually, I'm going to have to dip this into water. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but I'll be back and show you how to do that. You dip this into water so it makes it more pliable and bendable and thinner kind of feeling. So you, that way it... It decoupages very nicely the scrapbook paper. If I was using rice paper or like Jamie Ray vintage decoupage paper, you put a bright color like a white underneath it so that you have a better color palette. Uh, color of your paper shows up better. You know, it's if you want it to be more moody, then you can go ahead and do. Um, a darker color underneath. But this is going to be the back and I'm not going to decoupage the back. I don't think I will. I'll see how it looks. I don't think I'm going to decoupage the back. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all painted. Maybe I should decoupage it, the back of it, but first I'll try painting it and see if I like if it's okay. I can't see them like putting this bunny and showing the back of it, but maybe they will. Maybe I'll have to decoupage it.
Yeah, um, I like it. I like this paint. It's nice. I'm getting these in my booth a little late, though. Today is Palm Sunday. I don't know any of you out there are celebrating week before Easter. Here in Michigan, we got snow two days ago. Had a snow day here in Michigan. Last month was February. We got a tornado, thunderstorms about a mile away from my house so go figure the first day of spring in Michigan we got snow in the and in winter in Michigan we had a tornado thunderstorm high winds at the end of February all right, everybody, it's me, Trisha, on Creative Unique Treasures. Thank you for joining me on my channel. And I'm going on step two with my bunnies. It's almost Easter, so I have to hurry up and get these in my booth. But even if I don't, I'm planning on getting them there before Easter. So there's my big bunny. It's painted with the white milk paint in Rust-Oleum 
I have my pan of water. There's water in here. The reason I have water is because I'm going to decoupage this thicker, thicker scrapbook paper. And when I used to do use scrapbook paper and decoupage, you put it in the water to make it more pliable and bendable. So that's what I'm going to do. So I hope it works out because this is a lot thicker than I'm used to, but I really liked this um, paper. I also have, if it does, all else fails, I have this wrapping paper, which is a lot thinner. But the only thing about the wrapping paper, it's very pretty, but it's very big and busier. And I kind of wanted a smaller print. So here we go. Let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and dip my chip brush into the Mod Podge and paint it on. I think I'm just going to go down this half right here. This is a new bottle of Mod Podge which makes it nice. It's nice and... Alright, here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and dip this in there to make it a little bit less stiff. Put that down. There we go. So it's more, see it's a little bit more able to bend. I'm just going to lay it down here. And I should, I got a piece of paper towel. Let's see how that works. Like I said, it might not turn out. It might. I was kind of concerned about the, um, see the line of demarcation up here. I'm going to have to, like with wallpaper, try to match it up. But it may not um, match up totally. So I'm going to go ahead and push down on this. I don't think I have Mod Podge up here, so I guess I'll put some Mod Podge up there. And all the way up. Alright, there we go. It's very wet. So, and I'll kind of like maybe go around the edges like this. And I don't mind it being a little bit more like shabby. Not so perfect. See, it's kind of rubbing off the print is kind of coming off, which is okay. I don't want I don't want mind the fraying. There we go. It's going to Try not to get, like I said, this is a new thing for me. I like to try new things with you guys. Let's see how it works. Let's see if it's going to work. So far, it is sticking. Let me try to get my water out of the way before I spill it all over it, like I already did right here. So.
dry overnight. Some of the excess off. Okay. Tomorrow when it dries, I'll be able to take sandpaper and just go like this. Not this way, but this way. So that it'll all come off nicely. That's already dry. So that came out really good. I don't mind it up here, but I'm not thr thrilled with it. But we'll see how it dries tomorrow. So I'll come back and show you how it looks tomorrow so far. Thanks for joining me. Have a good evening. Okay, here's our, um, here's the, the bunny all done, decoupaged. There's some white spots there, but that's okay. I'm going to probably color them in or paint them in with watercolors or just or sand it a little bit but I still have to sand the edges and all the way around but with this one I did it this way and I, with the next one I'm going to do this here bunny I'm going to lay the paper down with the back side this is the one I'm going to use this way for the bunny there. But I'm going to put it down on the back side and I'm going to lay the bunny on the paper, make sure it's, the flowers are growing up and not across. That's always good. And I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to trace this out and the only thing I have right now is a pen I would rather use a pencil. I can't find a pencil right offhand. I'm going to lay this down on here and I'm going to trace it out and then cut it out and then that way I'll have I won't have so much raw edges like that. So there we go. Cut it out. Probably should have my glasses on, but that's okay, I guess. Kind of don't have to be exact, but that way I don't have so much ex excess and I'm not wasting a lot. So I'm going to get that cut out. Here's my bunny. There, that way I can just decoupage this on there and not waste so much. And then I can try to match it up down here. Actually, 
there it is. It matches up right there. That's awesome. It matches up pretty good right there. See, there's the kind of like wallpaper. So this one come along a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and um, turn it over. Maybe I should tape this on so it doesn't move around. Get a piece of tape, painter's tape, and tape that together. So that turned out a little bit better, I think. As we go, we learn a little bit, don't we? Okay, here I got the um, bunny here. Here it is. Um, I gotta have to sand it. I think I already told you that. So I'm going to go ahead and let this one dry really good. And now I have this one here. And I cut that, I cut that out. And then I match this up. This piece so it'll go like that. Somewhat, you know, matching up. And I got my water, and I got my Mod Podge, Matt in the in the the sheen of Matt. Get that off of there. Okay, and I got my pan of water over here that I'm gonna drop down my paper in and get it wet. Take my Mod Podge, paint it on here with my chip brush. Let's see, pop down here. All right. This down on there. Push it down. Try to make it straight. Here's some cellophane here that'll help it push down and get the air bubbles out so it doesn't I don't drag with my whoops see like that. Like just like that. I don't want to do that. Get all the bubbles out. There we go. Alright. I got this piece here. It goes about right there to match up. Looks like I gotta put a little bit of glue on there. See, if you don't use this, you kind of tear the paper off, the pattern off. There we go. Come on the edges a little bit, make sure it's down a little bit.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the water. Get it nice and wet. And go ahead and paint the Mod Podge on there. It's 3 o'clock. Thursday afternoon. Couple days. Tomorrow's Good Friday. Hi. Okay. Alright. Line that up. Kind of like wallpaper. Okay, I'll go and shoot. Maybe we'll paint, we'll cut that so it's not pulling so tight. It's got glue on there. Okay. I'll let that dry. Well, actually, I gotta add. A little bit of a few pieces here and there. It's probably I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece off and kind of Hmm, trying to find, it must be around there. Trying to find a match up for this. Okay, I've got this all done. I'm just going to let this all dry. All dry. And I got this one right here. And it's a little bit not perfect. But you guys know me, I don't like perfect. I mean, maybe someday I might like perfect, but not today. Anyway, so 
I'm going to go ahead and sand this down so it comes off. See, try to just go in one direction. I'm not doing a very good job of going in one direction, but I'm going to try. If I can just There, it's starting to rip a little bit. This has been, it's been about, there it goes. So, so that kind of looks nice. There we go. There we go. So that looks pretty good. You have to make sure this is really dry before you sand it. So that, so that it gets a nice little edge like that. So I'm going to do that all the way around see how I got extra. Hopefully I end up cutting this a little bit off. But um, I'm going to do that all the way around and clean up all my edges and I'll come back and show you. Hi, me, it's me, Trisha. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm, I got my bunny here. And I got all the edges sanded on this one right here. edges are glued down. antiquing wax that I have and I'm just kind of going around the edges trying to antique it a little bit and I'm taking like a damp damp um, 
washcloth. Not washcloth, but rag. It's kind of... See if I can set them, stand them up, and then take the camera down and show you how they look. Let's 
so. There's that one. And there's that one. Let me turn this light off. Maybe there won't be such a glare. Let's see if that lighting is better. There we go. We got our Easter bunnies done a day before Easter. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and put them in the booth and for maybe a month or so. They're kind of a nice spring, spring decor. So I want to thank you so much for joining me. And um, I hope you guys have a blessed evening or day, whatever whatever it is that you're, where you're at. And I want to thank you so much for watching. See you next time.